What is going on guys? John here from John's Fishing Channel. Thanks for tuning in. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. Today, I'm actually making this intro after I made my fishing video in Northern Wisconsin because I cannot find it on my computer to save my life and uh, maybe I just didn't do it, although I'm pretty sure I did. Anywho, today's video will be me fishing in Northern Wisconsin for largemouth bass with a fly rod. Spoiler alert, I don't really catch any big fish. It was a pretty slow day on the water, but I do talk about a lot of the techniques that I use when I'm fly fishing for largemouth bass. A lot of really good information in this video today. A couple smaller fish. So sit back, enjoy the video, and thank you for watching. So let's get started. I'm using kind of like a brown woolly bugger looking uh, lure today. It's got a weighted nose on it, goes underwater. Also using a Sage XP. It's a number eight, nine foot rod. It is uh, four ounces, and it's uh, just a fantastic, fantastic bass rod. And we have the Gunnison number four reel. Uh, what should butt up to this rod pretty good. All right, so we're gonna, just going to go ahead. We're going to motor around the shore here and hopefully pull a couple bass in the boat. And, uh, you know, it's uh, windy today, a couple clouds in the sky. It's about 70 degrees. It's been cold and rainy the last few days. That probably turned the fish off, uh, but I'm hoping that they'll kind of turn back on today and uh, we'll catch a couple fish on the fly rod, which is a very, very enjoyable experience. I know a lot of you guys have had a lot of questions about fly fishing since I did the Fly Fishing 101 video. Uh, so if you have any questions about fly fishing and my setup, how I do it, what I'm doing, um, go ahead, comment below. I'd really, really appreciate that. I love answering your guys' fishing questions and I can kind of do like a, a Fly Fishing 102 or 201. I'm not exactly sure how those classes work out like that. But uh, we'll just go ahead and see what we get in the boat today. All right, that was a real fiasco. <laughs> I was wrapped around all sorts of stuff. So like I said, when you get all mucked up, your fly line's in a bunch, you're wrapped around rods, anything like that, wind knots, you really just want to stop and get it out. That's really the best thing to do when you're fly fishing. Because you can really, I mean, you can get this line so bad that you, really, you almost have to cut it off and retie all your lines, which is not fun. So I'm in prime territory here. Northern Wisconsin bass country, as I like to call it. Again, I'm trying to cast as close to shore as I can. It looks like we got another fish on. A little bass. Sometimes I'll hold the line with my mouth and I'll just try to reel it in and we'll get that fish tight and we'll strip them in the rest of the way to the boat. Another little large mouth. Hopefully we find some bigger fish along the shore here. Just a little guy. Catch and release today. A lot of you guys ask me if I ever keep fish. I do, occasionally, depending on the species and uh, you know how they taste. Bass don't really taste that great in the summer. They're a little mushy and a little greasy. In the winter, the meat firms up and it's actually pretty good. And bam, there's a one. Actually saw that uh, the line kind of get pulled underneath the water right there, which is really cool. Another little largemouth bass. We'll go ahead and reel in some excess line here so it doesn't get all tangled up in the boat. And we'll strip the fish the rest of the way back into the boat. This one's just a little bit bigger. Go ahead and pull right up in here. Largemouth bass, of course, don't have teeth. So, uh, you know, you can grab them like this by the lip. Sometimes in the mating season, their teeth are a little sharper. But as summer goes on, the more they eat, they wear down a little bit and uh, you don't have to worry about those sharp teeth. But it can kind of grind the skin off your, your hand like a sandpaper would. I tell you what, and I really appreciate all the interest that my fly fishing videos have uh, generated on my channel. They're getting a lot of views, they're getting a lot of interaction, you guys ask a lot of questions. Um, I grew up fly fishing, it's something I've done a lot in my life and I'm very, very happy to be able to share all that knowledge with you guys. Oh my gosh, another tiny, 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 tiny little bass. I'd like to see a big old monster bass just come through and eat this guy. Well, he's not that small. He's a little bigger. He's still pretty small, but he's a lot bigger than what we have been catching. 
hopefully that's a good sign. Hopefully we're finding some bigger fish here. See what happens here. There's really a lot of nice underwater structure here. You know, I've targeted a lot of tiny, tiny fish today, and I mean tiny. I would really, really like to see something big come out of one of these spots. You know, one of the ways I will fish is I have a couple different spots I like to fish <clears throat> on a couple different lakes. But when I go from lake to lake to lake, you know, I have, there's a fish, uh, five or six spots that I really, you know, I just like to check them out. And I've either caught fish there. Um, other people have told me they've caught fish there. Or I, you know, I just happen to think that it's just an all awesome, awesome spot. And, you know, and of course, if you see something on the fish finder, then you know there's fish there. But if the first spot doesn't have fish, I'll go to the second spot. If the second spot doesn't have fish, I'll go to the third spot. Something just took something on the shore right down there. Uh, you know, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'll go from lake to lake, from spot to spot, until I actually find some fish. You know, and all species kind of have their different spots and what they like. Uh, largemouth like logs, they like lily pads, they like undercut banks. Um, they can pretty much thrive in any environment as long as the water stays relatively warm. They're what you would call like a warm water, freshwater fish, meaning that they like water, you know, that stays a little bit warmer. They can be more active, they grow faster. You will find them in cold water lakes, but then you'll have a little bit more competition with something like a smallmouth bass or a walleye. Um, Northern can live anywhere and don't really care about anything. Muskie can live anywhere depending on their environment. At, uh, but largemouth bass prefer warmer lakes and smallmouth bass prefer colder lakes and swift moving rivers. Let's see if we can get another fish here. This a, might have been the biggest fish that I have caught all day. Kind of sad. Oh, I'm looped around my rod holder. <clears throat> There we go. Pulling some line here. <clears throat> and one of the easiest ways to reset your fly cast is to just reel in some line, you know? Go back to eight feet, 10 feet, work on that, and slowly go out a foot at a time. And it's also just kind of a great way to learn. But they sell pretty awesome, you know, starter kits for people who want to learn how to fly fish, you know, for. 100 bucks, 200 bucks, you can get all the stuff that you're going to need. Uh, bring it home with some sort of manual or instructions. You can look on YouTube for instructions, of course. I'm going to start doing a couple of different uh, fishing tutorial videos coming up here in the near future. It's kind of something I'm going to branch out into. Reviews, tutorials, fishing, all different kinds of things. But fly fishing, you know, it's a lot more work than spin fishing but it's just it's so enjoyable. All right, so I fished two, two of my three logs. The third one's a little farther away over there. We're gonna go ahead and fish that one. Let it sink down to the bottom, then I'm just kind of bumping it along back on the bottom. Largemouth bass, they'll pick stuff up. They have huge mouths, they open it, they create a whole kind of vacuum vortex of water that rushes through their gills, and the food goes right into their mouth. So they like to pick stuff off the surface where they can suck it down or up off the bottom of the lake where they can really create that suction on the bottom. Yeah, you know, it's a little chilly today. If these clouds would just blow out, it would be a perfect day, but it's kind of supposed to be like this all day. I had to target some big fish here. I'm probably going to go ahead and move, seeing as how I've only caught one fish here and it, you know, it wasn't that big. But I'm going to put one more cast right back into the thick things here. I'm really going to work my line, get it back in up by that log, see if I catch anything. Nothing. All right, let's move. All righty, so I'm in one of my other spots that I like to fish. There's a couple of submerged logs here. And if I don't catch anything here, I think I'm gonna go fish a couple really deep uh, drop-offs where there's a couple weed lines, you know, where it drops from maybe five feet down to 20, 30 feet. Because it really doesn't seem like the fish are on the logs today, so maybe they're out deep, I'm not quite sure. We'll take a look at the fish finder, we'll troll around a little bit, and we'll try to find out where all these fish are at. Well, I think it's time to 
hang up the old fly rod for the day. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's fly fishing video. Like I said, not a lot of action, but a really just a solid amount of information there for you. If you're interested in fly fishing, go ahead, comment below. Go ahead, ask me any questions on this video, and I'll make some more fly fishing tutorials in the future. I really, really appreciate you guys watching the channel. Please subscribe, share this video with your friends, and stay tuned for more fishing from me, John.